Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. So the trailer dropped and shit has officially got real. I've already done my first initial trailer review. You can check that out. I also did a theory video based on Entertainment Weekly's little boo-boo with the Night King on the cover. You might want to check that out so you can find out who the Night King might be. I will link those videos for you. So I did my first trailer review. I missed some things, but y'all were getting me all the way together in the comments. So I watched the trailer again and again. Someone linked me to the Lord of Light version of the trailer on Reddit, and it's like a brightened version. I got to zoom in on some things, and this video is going to be everything we missed and everything we didn't see. So let's start off with what we didn't see. Almost everything. We didn't see almost everything because the entire trailer was darker than a haunted house. I mean, really. I think they said, you know what? We're just, this is how we're going to keep season eight a mystery. We're going to give them a trailer, but just let's make it really dark so we can't really see this. So we're going to give them a trailer, but they really can't see it. So we didn't see Melisandre. We didn't see the Night King, the Army of the Dead, Viserion, Theon, Yara, Direwolves, and Ghost. Where is Ghost? Hashtag free ghost. So the first thing I missed is that in the forge at Winterfell with Gendry, there is a ton of dragon glass on the ground. I mean, it's dragon glass everywhere. So they are definitely making something. And I know some of the stuff that they are making. So the Unsullied have dragon glass on the tip of every spear. Also, if you look to the left, of Grey Worm and Masande, there is some spiky dragon glass contraption. I don't know, is it like a dragon glass ball that they're gonna just like catapult at the Night King and the Army of the Dead? Is it like a dragon glass fence? I don't know, but you guys can see it. It looks really, really cool. If you look at this photo of Jorah, you can see the walls of Winterfell and they have the same spiky dragon glass log things all around the walls of Winterfell. If you look at the Unsullied, they have these big weapons beside them. I don't know, are they catapults? I don't really know what they are, but I would love to see them like make a whole dragon glass ball of these spiky things and just catapult them at some whites. I'm not sure. So the Unsullied also look to have dragon glass on their shields. There is definitely some texture on their shields, whereas the old shields looked a lot different. But they are definitely preparing Winterfell with a lot of defenses. I actually think a lot of this could be Tyrion's planning. Tyrion prepared King's Landing for the siege when Stannis came through during the Battle of the Black Water. So I could definitely see Tyrion helping with the plans for the defenses of Winterfell. Gendry surely has a lot of work to do with all of this dragon glass. Also, in this picture of Jorah, now a lot of people were pointing out that Jorah Mormont has Heartsbane. Heartsbane is Samuel Tarly's father's Valyrian steel sword. The one Sam stole from Horn Hill. Now, this could be Heartsbane. It kind of looks like it. I don't know why they would give it to Jorah. Maybe because Jorah is a good swordsman. But Entertainment Weekly did an article about the Battle of Winterfell where they went behind the scenes and this is what happened. During one scene, Bradley Sam wields a sword at undead white attackers, played by stuntmen. The script playfully says of the whites, they're zombies, but not zombies. We have our own thing. Sam looks like a badass, I say admiringly to Cogman. The producer turns to the others. You hear what he said? That's the problem. Sam isn't supposed to look like a badass. So I think it's safe to say that Sam will have Heartsbane himself. I'll also link this article below in its entirety so you can read up on some of the details about the Battle of Winterfell. I had people commenting that this clip was a pack of direwolves. Look, no one wants direwolves more than me. No one wants Nymeria and her wolf pack coming through like the Knights of the Vale during the Battle of the Bastards more than me. But these are definitely horses. You can see the joints, 
and the hooves like I wish they were dire wolves. But sadly, they are not. They aren't gonna give us that type of juice in a trailer. If a pack of dire wolves is gonna come through, they will not give one hint that that is gonna happen. But they did show us Nymeria's wolf pack in season seven. So I think they are going to be in season eight. There was no need to drop Nymeria's wolf pack in season seven and spend all that money that wolves cost. And then also just let us know that they're in the Riverlands unless they are gonna come into play. Now for the books, George R.R. R. Martin is quoted as saying this, you know, I don't like to give things away. You don't hang a giant wolf pack on the wall unless you intend to use it. So for the books, Martin intends to use the wolf pack. And I think the show intends to use the wolf pack too. Will it be in Winterfell, the Riverlands, or King's Landing? That's really the question. So in the beginning, in the Arya chase scene, a lot is going on. Arya is running from something. At first, I thought she might be in King's Landing, maybe running from the mountain, but I'm convinced now that she's in Winterfell because she is running with a dagger of dragonglass. In her hand, she has a dragonglass dagger. Cat's ball is on her hip, but I do not see needle. Where's needle? So it looks like she's actually running from whites. Now, Arya has done a chase scene before with the Waif and Bravos, so maybe she is specifically trying to lead these whites into a trap. As I've said a hundred thousand times, I know you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but the crypts of Winterfell are magical and they likely have power like Blood Raven's cave. So maybe she is trying to lead the whites to the crypts so they will explode like the ones that chase Bran into Blood Raven's cave. Or maybe she's just running for her life. The concerning part about this is that they blacked it out. They blacked out who it is. They don't want us to see clearly who it is. In some scenes, you should be able to see it, but they actually went back and blacked it out, which means that it could be someone we would recognize immediately when seeing it. If it was just any white, do they black it out? I mean, a white chasing Arya, that's not groundbreaking. Maybe it's someone she knows or someone we would know if we seen it. Maybe she's running from it so she doesn't have to kill it because it's someone that she loves. I don't know guys, but this dragon glass dagger looks the same as the one she has in her hand in this photo. Also, this looks like she's actually talking to Daenerys. Is that Daenerys's red scarf? Speaking of scarves, a lot of people on Twitter were talking about Daenerys and Sansa having matching scarves, or should I say ascots? So Daenerys has this red ascot and Sansa has a black ascot. So there is this popular fan theory that Daenerys and Sansa are going to be the best of friends. I'm not sure about all that. I'm not here to talk about that. But Sansa does have tendencies to dress like the queen. When she was in King's Landing, she started to do her hair like Cersei and all of that Southern shit. So now she has matching ascots with Daenerys. At least you're matching the real queen now. I mean, maybe that's just what highborn ladies do when it's cold. Like, maybe that's just what they wear. I don't know. But Sansa doesn't have it on in episode one when Daenerys arrives. And Daenerys arrives with hers on. But Sansa in her ascot, it seems to be a later episode. Maybe Daenerys gifts her one. M maybe. Or maybe Sansa admires her so much that she copies her style. Sansa the swagger jacker. Another thing that I missed was that Cersei is drinking wine. If Cersei is drinking wine, then it's likely that she's not pregnant. And we know this because the reason that Tyrion found out that she was pregnant is because Cersei wasn't drinking wine. Maggie the Frog is never wrong. Three, you shall have. Gold will be their crowns, gold will be their shrouds. So them eggs are scrambled. Now I want to talk about dragons. 
My first thoughts about the dragons and all of the shots of the dragons were these were likely on the way to Winterfell. All of these shots of the dragons are them on their way to Winterfell because the north is a vast place and we haven't seen like one fourth of it. So Daenerys looks to be in the same clothes that she's in when she arrives to Winterfell or maybe it looks like that because she just has the same jacket and scarf. But there was one photo that I was confused by and I'm actually still confused by it and it's this shot. I said it looks like beyond the wall in my initial review but I just don't understand why they would be beyond the wall. So a lot of the commenters commented that they thought it was the Veil of Aaron and it could be it does snow a lot there in winter it's it's it is deep and valley-ish but there isn't a river running through the gates of the moon and this picture has no gate at all so I still think like it's either some random place in the north or beyond the wall I just don't know why they would be going beyond the wall I did do some comparisons and I think this could be the milk water river beyond the wall near the fist of the first men I'm not sure why they would need to be following the milk water or going to the fist of the first men though but the fist of the first men is where in the books ghost leads John to the dragon glass and the horn but in the show Sam finds it that's the fist of the first men and the fist of the first men is where the white walkers attack the night's watch I'm wondering if something important is buried at the fist of the first men and that's why the white walkers attacked it in full force like they attacked the fist of the first men hard like they rode right past Sam and everything Everything. Sam's just sitting there looking at him. They're letting him live like we ain't worried about you. We got to get to the fist. I don't know. It does look like, I, I don't know. It does look like the fist in the milk water, but I'm not sold. I also did want to say in my initial review, I thought that Euron only had three ships left, but come to find out these aren't Euron's ships. These are Theon's ships, and I guess he's on his way to rescue Yara. The last thing I want to talk about is the sword Blackfire. So I was saying that Harry Strickland could have Blackfire, and people were saying, no, it's not Blackfire. The pommel doesn't match. Da 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 da. And I'm just like, okay. It might not be Blackfire, but the Golden Company last had Blackfire. The pommel does not have to be the same as it is in the books. The pommel on Longclaw was changed from a bear to a direwolf when Gior Mormont gave it to John. Ice was completely melted down into two swords. Pommels get changed. The last time anyone in Westeros or anywhere saw Blackfire was during the Blackfire Rebellions when Bittersteel picked it up and carried it away with him. And then, just so happens, Bittersteel forms the Golden Company. And just so happens, the Golden Company is coming to Westeros and the leader of the Golden Company has a fancy sword. So, yes, pommels get changed. The sword that Harry Strickland has, it is a fancy sword. It's actually the size that it should be. Like, Blackfire is the same size as Longclaw. It's a hand and a half sword or bastard sword or whatever. And the sword is in the hands of the last known people that had black fire and in the books george has said we will see it so i don't think it's far-fetched to say that it's black fire or that it could be black fire allegedly but anyway what do you think as always thanks for watching thanks to everyone that supports me on patreon if you like this video please give it a thumbs up Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.